2023 has already been an absolutely stacked year for a JRPG fan. We've already had several RPGs that deserve high accolades and recognition, such as Final Fantasy XVI, Sea of Stars, Octopath Traveler 2, and Hogwarts Legacy. It's safe to say we've been eating good, but we're only in September and we still have four months to go packed with amazing RPGs. Today on Shinky Plays, we're going to take a look at 10 RPGs coming out in the last third of 2023. So grab a drink, strap yourself in, and get ready to hear about 10 RPGs I'm looking forward to for the rest of 2023. Bay Farm, to be released on September 8th, 2023 for Nintendo Switch and PC. Looking like a very cute and magical Harvest Moon, the character designs look incredibly silly, but I can't complain. After all, have you seen Animal Crossing? That game has ridiculous looking character designs, but it was super cozy and fun. Anyways, I do enjoy my farming simulators every now and then, and this game just looks so cute. Watching the trailer, it seems as if it has inspiration from Stardew Valley as well, with options for fishing and mining. I can't wait to give this one a try. Oh, and what do you know? It's out today. Video over. Booting up my Switch. Hope you have a wonderful- Just kidding. We still have a whole lot of games to cover today. Eternites. To be released on September 12th for PlayStation 4 and 5 as well as Switch. Initially launching digitally, but a physical release is scheduled for the 2023 holiday season. Eternites is a game that caught my eye immediately. It's a beautiful looking game, and the blending of a sim date and action RPG is an interesting combination. The main premise of the game is an anti-aging drug named Eternites is mutating people into monsters and resulting in supernatural events. The protagonist, who does not have a name, gets attacked by a strange woman named Delia, who cuts off his arm with a scythe, and then a new woman he met on Not Tinder replaces it with a glowing arm that can transform into a sword. Definitely looking forward to this one. It's also budget price at $30, so it's definitely worth a shot. Botan Kaitos, or is it Baton Kaitos? I'm not sure. Anyways, Botan Kaitos 1 and 2 HD Remaster is to be released on September 15th for the Nintendo Switch. This collection is a remaster of Botan Kaitos Eternal Wings in the Lost Ocean, released on December 5th, 2003, and Botan Kaitos Origins released on February 23rd, 2006, both for the Nintendo GameCube. I initially brushed these games to the side because I wasn't a fan of card based battle systems. However, I'm looking forward to give them the old college try this time around, even though they only feature Japanese audio instead of English that was in the original release. Big sads. Infinity Strash Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die is to be released on September 28th for the PlayStation 4 and 5, Nintendo Switch, PC, and Xbox. I love Dragon Quest, it's one of my favorite series of all time. This game is an action RPG based off the anime of the same name. The gameplay looks like quite a bit of fun, it looks pretty fast paced, with that Dragon Quest charm to it. This game also looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure, regardless of how it plays, I'll enjoy it. Dragon Quest always gives off that warm feeling of childhood, even if it is a spin off. Ease 10 Nordics, scheduled to be released in Japan on September 28th for the PlayStation 4 and 5 and Switch. Anyone else get annoyed when people call it Wise? It's been a pet peeve of mine for ages, but I digress. Most of the games on this list are localized games, but I had to mention Ease 10, as it's another one of my favorite series and I'm super excited for it. Hopefully, we hear about a localization of this game soon from NIS America. The music and gameplay looks absolutely stellar. It looks even as if it will be better than Ease 8, as it seems to have gotten rid of the attack type system that plagued Ease 7 to 9. The new mechanic in Ease 10 is naval combat. For anyone who has experienced the East titles, you would understand how silly of an idea that is. Not that naval combat is bad, but Adol has awful luck with ships. Oh well, good luck Adol and friends, you'll need it. In addition, keep an eye out for my review of the Japanese release of East 10 sometime in October or early November. Hit that subscribe button and ding that bell notification so you don't miss it. Woohoo! Shameless advertising! Disgaea 7 Scheduled to be released on October 3rd for PlayStation 4 and 5, PC, and Nintendo Switch. The latest release of NIS's flagged strategy RPG series. I'm sure at this point any JRPG fan has heard of Disgaea. Disgaea can be explained as nothing outside of number porn. With damage and stats in the hundreds of millions and billions, and humor everywhere, Disgaea 7 is looking amazing and it's another one I'm really looking forward to. 
However, after Disgaea 6, I'm really questioning why they're releasing it on Switch. The Switch port of 6 really didn't run all that well. Ah well, maybe this one will be more stable. Prime Machina, scheduled to be released on October 24th for PlayStation 4 and 5, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Crime Machina is an action RPG in a post-apocalyptic setting with your playable characters being androids that are trying to feel some sort of feelings of love. I personally really enjoy post-apocalyptic settings, and one coupled with a romantic overtone it seems like a very enjoyable experience. I've been burned by Furyu games before, but this one looks incredibly stylish, so I'm willing to give it another shot. Furio, please don't let me down. Star Ocean Second Story R is scheduled to be released on November 2nd for PlayStation 4 and 5, Nintendo Switch, and PC. This is a remake of Star Ocean The Second Story released in 1998 for the PlayStation 1. I'm not entirely sure if it should be considered a remaster or remake. I'm leaning towards remake as it appears the game has different battle systems. At least from trailers, it looked like they got rid of spell freeze in battle, let your backup characters assist you, as well as something called chain attacks. As the original was one of my favorite PlayStation 1 RPGs, this is definitely a no-brainer. I cannot wait to re-experience Star Ocean 2. Super Mario RPG is getting a remake scheduled to be released on November 17th for the Nintendo Switch. Do you remember when this game got announced? It seemed almost as if the whole internet had a heart attack in unison. Every time a remake is rumored, this is one of the games that's mentioned, usually alongside Chrono Trigger. I was honestly very surprised when this got an announcement. I thought I was being trolled, honestly. I believe this was one of the first games with in-game play QTE events to enhance your attacks in a turn-based fashion. This game doesn't look like it's doing anything other than a graphical upgrade, but honestly, sometimes that's all you need to have a great game on your hands. One thing I am concerned about is that since Square Enix isn't really working on this game, will the Culex battle still be included? I'm really hoping so. Regardless, this game is also going to be a blast from the past that everyone is sure to enjoy. Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince is scheduled to be released on December 1st for Nintendo Switch. Two Dragon Quest games in a single year? Three if you count the PC port of Dragon Quest Treasures. I will always appreciate more Dragon Quest love in the West. While Dragon Quest Treasures seemed like it took inspiration from the Dragon Quest Monsters subseries, this is a true Dragon Quest Monsters title. We haven't gotten a true Dragon Quest Monsters game since I believe 2012 with Terry's Wonderland 3D, and that didn't even get localized. Unless Joker 3 counts as a made Dragon Quest Monsters game, definitely a great way to start off December. I can't wait. We still have four months to go in 2023, and still quite the grocery list of games coming out. Are there any games mentioned that you're interested in picking up? What about games I missed? Let me know in the comments below. Happy gaming everyone! If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know when my videos go live. That's the meat and potatoes folks, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a wonderful day.